Hello everyone, here's another slideshow presentation coming your way. Um, this one is going to be focused on the various uh, environmental issues uh, that come up in discussion of politics nowadays. And uh, I'm going to just sort of focus them, uh, focus on them all together. You know, uh, whether it be uh, the supposed uh, warming of the earth, or um, overpopulation and or uh, climate change otherwise well we're just gonna see um, we're just gonna see what um, historically how humanity has been able to overcome the various obstacles and hurdles that it had confronted and what was really the key for them to be able to come up with a solution for then uh, humanity be, be able to proceed in the future. But one thing uh, I want to note here is uh, with this slide is as you can see this is you know uh, straight up scientific uh, record uh, that that it seems that the climate of the earth has always been changing always been changing. Um, so and there's this uh, famous exchange between Bill Nye and Tucker Carlson and sometimes you know at least comes to show you how dogmatic these environmentalists could be with their uh, beliefs. And so perhaps even if humanity never existed, if the Homo sapien never walked on this earth, um, the planet earth would have still been warming up and cooling down as it has uh, prior even to us arriving here, according to this data. And now, um, we got here the growth of the uh, oh, global population, and uh, it's interesting how up until the 19th century, when was the exact year here? Um, I thought I had the year set up here. Yeah, sometime in the 19th century was when uh, when the when the world population finally reached a billion. So that, that really tells you how sparsely populated um, the uh, people were back in the day. And, uh, and then, as you can see, in the next century, it goes up to 2 billion, increases by several more billions in the, um, in the 20th century. And uh, now the, the pace has really picked up. Now we add on a billion about every 10 to 15 years. All right, so now there was, a, there was an idea back in the day, and now it still is the case, I guess, that, um, that population is growing too quickly for us to be able to keep up uh, with providing it with uh, sustenance and that uh, that earth has a finite amount of resources and potential to, to which we can uh, acquire from a food in order to feed the population right um, that is true but uh, but we got to also consider that um, it's not like the earth is being utilized to 100% of its potential, you know, and uh, just because we have a certain capacity of being able to produce food now, it doesn't mean that that capacity cannot be extended later in the future, right? I mean, people, let's say in early 19th century, or early 20th century, perhaps would have never conceived of the world population being at 7.5 billion or or even larger than that but here we are and uh, even though a lot of the world is still in uh, levels of poverty but a lot of us are still you know uh, decently well off than how humans have lived for the majority of history but we even though uh, the world population is now uh, the largest has ever been. You got to also consider this. 
Oh, okay. Uh, I got to share this quote by uh, Malthus, who uh, who was the first person to sort of uh, put the sentiment into, uh, into text uh, from from where it pr proliferated the idea that uh, world population is growing too quickly for Earth to be able to keep up, or for our resources to be able to be provided for them. So here's a quote I'm going to read. The power of population is so superior to the power of the earth to produce subsistence for man. The premature death must in some shape or other visit the human race. All right. And uh, that book was published in 1798. So uh, based on the previous, uh, previous chart, then uh, the world population would have still been under a billion but they do tell us that you can fit the entire world population into one city if everybody in the entire world was standing shoulder to shoulder you could fit all of them into one into this particular city that has i guess enough of an extent to fit them all any any idea what the city may be well, here it is. It's the city of Los Angeles. So everybody could have been standing shoulder to shoulder, and it would have just uh, covered the uh, the space that, uh, of Los Angeles. But here, here's another uh, thing that they suggest. If everybody was to live uh, one by one another, right, in houses in like a huge neighborhood, then you could have fit the state of Texas, and that's it. It would have been just one large neighborhood that would um, host the entire uh, populace of the world. So if that's the case, if it's just one big neighborhood in Texas, couldn't all the remainder of the earth be used in order to supply it with uh, food, sustenance, nutrition? I don't know. It seems... Uh, feasible to me but but there have been as I said obstacles that humanity had to face in the past that without it it couldn't it couldn't have pr proceeded to uh, the levels of population as they are now or the levels of uh, technological advancement as they are now and one good example of this is this guy Fritz Haber he's a uh, I believe he's a German chemist. He won the Nobel Prize in 1918. He synthesized um, nitrogen gas with hydrogen gas to create ammonia. And out of ammonia, we we're able to uh, make fertilizer. Um, and uh, now, as a result, we're able to uh, acquire more, uh, more food from agriculture. Otherwise, um, it seemed like humanity had uh, almost reached a dead end and they couldn't uh, proceed any further un until uh, his brilliant discovery and huge contribution to uh, human civilization. The next people we ought to consider is uh, are these two gentlemen. William Cullen, who was a um, 18th century Scottish scientist, and Oliver Evans, um, he's an American engineer. So the first guy here was uh, basically um, the person who first uh, demonstrated how an, a refrigerator could have worked. But I guess uh, he was only able to show, demonstrate that, but never entered the market. And then much later in the U.S., Oliver Evans and, and several others were able to put that idea into, into practice and actually uh, uh, come up with a prototype and then uh, make it a, a venable good and sell it off. You know? And uh, as a result, we now have refrigerators. And imagine how the world would have been without refrigerators, you know. Our ability to storage, our ability to store food, would have been greatly um, uh, curtailed. 
uh, like back in the day, people would have just had to spice up their food with a whole lot of seasoning. Uh, uh, otherwise, it would have uh, gone bad. All right. So the point is, um, I guess the alarming, perhaps the alarming rate of growth is in really the world population. And, uh, but the error is that we seem to look at the total or the aggregate of our goods and services almost as being stagnant. But that's the wrong way to look at it. Um, with increased productivity, uh, you're able to uh, expand the amount of uh, food and other goods that can be acquired from the resources that we have here on Earth. So whether it be a shortage of water, uh, you know, fresh lake water that, that, that's actually uh, drinkable, you know, perhaps if we really come to the edge of running out of that kind of water, the scientists would really get their attention put into removing salt from ocean water, right? We have plenty of water there, just as somebody's got to figure out how to be able to do that in an efficient manner. But that's just one example. Um, you know, whether there's too much carbon dioxide uh, in the air or other gases, you know, if it really comes to it, some scientists, some engineer really got to put their mind into it um, to try to figure out how that could be, how that uh, could be used up in some way, perhaps productively, you know. So really, any of the obstacles and hurdles that we're going to face as humanity, the only solution, the key to these uh, concerns is human innovation. We have nothing else. By increasing red tape, you're not going to solve any of them. You're just going to basically make stagnant our economic growth. Uh, but we're basically going to retain the state as we have it now. Nothing is going to improve. So, what is uh, what we really got to depend on and focus on and hope in is our scientists and engineers and them being able to come up with real energy alternatives if what we have now is uh, real damaging to the economy, as we are told uh as we are told they are to be. Alright, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. And uh, hope you learned something. Um, like, share, subscribe.